One trillion. Yeah, this number is already insane, but it's just our starting point. Try to wrap your head around the fact that one trillion seconds is 32,000 years. And from here, let's go further. There are 3 trillion trees on our planet. Compare that to 7.8 billion people and realize how insignificant we are in our own world. 6 trillion miles is a distance more or less equal to one light year. That's how far light, the fastest thing in the universe, travels in a single year. And that's not even close to the nearest star apart from the sun. A human body consists of 37 trillion cells. Each day, you lose from 50 to 70 billion of them, and they always get replaced by other new ones. The largest known galaxy in the universe, called IC 1101, consists of about 100 trillion stars. It's the same number as there are synapses in an average human brain. Scientists estimate that there's anywhere from 1 to 10 quadrillion of ants living on Earth. Their combined weight is similar to the combined weight of all the humans on the planet. If there was someone alive at the beginning of the universe, and they have been counting every second from then until today, they'd be at somewhere around 434 quadrillion seconds right now. We've mentioned ants already, so why not count all the insects on our planet? There are, according to estimates, about 10 quintillion of them living side by side with us. Hopefully not side by side. A Rubik's cube with three rows of three tiles per side has over 43 quintillion different combinations, and some people can solve it in less than 5 seconds. If you take a regular computer keyboard and type in a 10-character password on it, it will take about 60 quintillion attempts for anyone else to blindly guess it. If you ever decide to count all the grains of sand on all the world's beaches, don't even bother. You're already a dozen billion years late. There's a whole sextillion of them. You a Sudoku fan? You needn't worry about running out of your favorite puzzles anytime soon. There are 6.7 sextillion possible 9x9 Sudoku grids. The observable universe, which is, by the way, about 93 billion light years, seems to be home to somewhere around 100 sextillion stars. And now, try to imagine that each of them has at least one planet, or eight, as our sun does. 600 sextillion. That's the approximate number of atoms in a single mole of any given chemical substance. The exact amount is called the Avogadro number, not to be confused with the avocado couple. One septillion, or a trillion trillion, has 24 zeros after one. In computing, a septillion bytes is called a yada byte. Man, what a great name for a restaurant! Yada bite this! How yummy! If you're into mathematics, you might find it curious that the largest power of 2 that doesn't have a zero when fully written out is 2 to the 86th power, or more than 77 septillion. We've covered cells in the human body, but what about atoms? They're smaller and much more numerous. There are about 7 octillion of them in you at any given time. Ever played poker in your life? Then you should know that there are more than 21 octillion possible combination of cards in a 10-player game. What are the odds of winning then? Well, either you have a slim chance, or a fat chance, or no chance. <laughs> Take your pick. The total number of bacteria on our planet equals something about 5 nonillion. That's a sextillion times more than there are people, and a quadrillion times more than the ants. If you're bored in solving the 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube, think about solving an Alexander star. It has over 7 decillion possible combinations and is not a cube, but a great dodecahedron. 10 to the power of 36 is called an undecillion, and there are more than 340 of them as we speak about the total number of possible internet addresses under the IPv6 system. Oh, solve that Alexander star? Good job! Now, how about a Rubik's Revenge? It's a cube that has four rows of four tiles each, and the number of possible combinations here is about 7.4 quattro decillion. That's 45 zeros after 10, if you're interested. Chess is a strategy game of all time, and for a good reason. There are more than 45 quattro decillion positions possible on a chessboard. <laughs> Want to test them all? prepared to burn the most powerful computer in the world. 
Remember how many atoms there are in your body alone? Well, there are over 13 quindecillions of them in our planet. And every second, this number grows. The mass of all matter in the universe – we're now not talking about dark matter, just the ordinary kind – has been calculated to be 146 quindecillion tons. Delving into the absurd, it's like a quindecillion blue whales. Yeah. I won't explain too much of it. Planck units are basically the shortest measurements of everything in the universe, and 8 novem decillion is an approximate number of Planck time units that have passed since the Big Bang. The ancient Greek philosopher Archimedes theorized that to fill the entire universe with sand, one would need about 1 vegetillion grains of the stuff. It should be noted, though, that he understood the universe as only two light years in diameter. If you skip through time back to the Big Bang with a deck of 52 cards and started shuffling them right away, right now you wouldn't even be halfway to mixing them in all possible orders. The number is roughly 80 unvigitillion. When you get so far to solve the Rubik's Revenge in less than a minute, I dare you to try a mega mix. It's a dodecahedron, like Alexander's star, but the number of possible combinations here is incomparably larger – 101 unvigentillion. Done with that too? Huh, <laughs> what can I say? Here's another Rubik's Cube variation for you called a professor's cube. It has 5 rows of 5 tiles each, giving a total number of 283 trevigentillion combinations. That's almost 3 million times more than a Mega Minx has. <laughs> Have fun! In cosmology, there's a widely unrecognized value called the Eddington number. It states that the total number of fundamental particles, that is, protons and electrons, in the universe is roughly 100 quinvigentillion. That's not even counting all the neutrons and morons in the universe. We finally run out of vigentillions, hopefully forever and come to a simple yet totally mind-blowing number – a Google. Sounds like the search engine, but spelled differently. Remember the Archimedes sand dilemma? You'd need 100,000 universes similar to the one we can observe today to store a Google of sand grains. Now, prepare for some serious brain racking. 1.57 multiplied by 10 to the power of 116 that's the number of possible combinations in a V cube 6, which has 6 rows of 6 tiles each. In Sanskrit, the ancient language born in India, there's a special word for a number of 10 to the power of 140. It means innumerable. How did they even come to this value, I wonder? You think V cube 6 was hard? Well, there's a V cube 7, too. You guessed it, that's a Rubik's cube with 7 rows of 7 tiles each. Its number of combinations has 44 more zeros after 10 than that of the 6-row version. Chess is child's play compared to the ancient Chinese game of Go. These black and white pebbles can be placed in a number of positions that has 170 zeros after 1. But even that pales in comparison with the good old Scrabble. Tiles of this popular word game can be arranged in a number of positions with 181 zeros. Remember Planck units? Here's another one. 10 to the power of 186 is a number of Planck volumes in the observable universe. And finally, the largest of them all, the mighty Googleplex. It's so big that if you try to write it with all the zeros after the initial 10, you'll probably have to travel beyond the boundaries of the observable universe. And yet, there's one more. It doesn't have any name. But according to the theory of the multiverse, it's the estimate of all the universes there can be apart from ours. And to write this one out in its entirety, you'd probably have to cross them all. Ah, oh, my head hurts.